All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Surus Solo Podcast. We are filming actually today so I can actually spread the love. I want to try to show everybody that watches my videos that I'm doing a podcast that can be reached on Apple and, and uh, Podbean and all these other different places that, you know, I don't have any idea of really what the podcast world is about. I'm fairly new into it. I've been making videos for a long time. And, uh, you know, even in that world, people really don't know me. They see a character, they see some of my stand-up, but I think I'm the, the most honest Carmen Sarasillo on my podcast, right? I'm looking around in my room, there's nobody here. I'm just trying to look for agreement. With who? With, with nobody. Carmen Sarasillo on the podcast is the most authentic Carmen Sarasillo you're gonna get. So, if, you're, if you've never seen my videos, go to YouTube. Carmen Surasolo, YouTube, or Facebook, my name, or the Construction Comic, which I have two different pages on Facebook. Construction Comic is something that I've been doing for a long time, and, uh, you know, it's it's a whole character that was created from, the, from my family's construction company back in the day that I carried on into comedy, and we do a lot of, uh, you know, sketches about the 80s, about now. Now kind of sucks, right? right? I've been saying now sucks because I think everyone who has reached 40 or 50 starts thinking that now sucks. Now is not as fun as then. You remember then? Back then when you didn't have too many responsibilities, when you lived in your mom's house and she paid the bills and you went out at night and you drove your 73 Monte Carlo to a party are you doing that shit? Now, when are you ever going to have that much fun again? It's going to be tough, man. Most people don't have that kind of fun anymore. You know, they become responsible. Now, I really do think, though, that after listening to a lot of young kids and my own kids that we had fun, man. We had a lot of fun in the 80s and the 90s, 70s. You know, some of these kids today, they're too serious. You know, my producer, Mike, who's not on the show today because this is the Surus Solo this is the version of my podcast that I do on my own without the help of someone recording it. I do it on myself. I do it all me, all me. Mike comes during the week and we do the Carmen Surasillo show, which is on Mondays. We release the uh, actual podcast on Wednesday, but we record on Monday. I think, you know, Mike is the kind of guy that uh, he's pretty serious. You know, he's a young guy, serious about life, knows about history, knows about what's going on. We didn't give a shit. You know, what, what the fuck do I care? When, when I'm 18, it's a blessing to be 18, right? It's, a, it's an amazing thing. And then you, you realize you gotta grow up when you're 30, 35. I mean, some guys today, I ask this to a lot of guys, a lot of guys my age. What age, at what age do you think guys grow up? That's a hard one. I, I, I think that, you know, if we're being honest, if we're being honest, Guys really don't try to grow up fully because we want to have some fun. We want to ride motorcycles. We want to go out and drink a little bit. We want to. We still want to give each other shit. We still want to have fun. We still want to buzz balls. To be that straight-laced guy, and I know a lot of them that are lawyers and doctors and have to be rigid in how they act and they can't joke around and they have a place in society. Hey, fuck, you're going to die. Guess what? You're gonna die, so you better have some fun and cut loose, my friend. If you hear a song, if you hear when, when Doves Cry by Prince, try to dance. I know you suck at dancing, and it's probably we're gonna mock the shit out of you when you try to do what Prince did in the video, but you tried, and that's all I care about. Like, I wanna hang with you if you tried. If you're a stiff, rigid mother, if you're an attorney, and then you're always worried, and you're, you know, you gotta follow the letter of the law, Look, I get it, but not when you're having fun. When you're having fun and you don't give a shit, and here's when you know you're having fun, when your wife goes, what are you doing? That's when you know you're having fun, huh? Why are you smoking? You don't smoke. Uh-huh, well maybe I do, maybe I do right now. You know, having fun is pushing the limits, I think. Pushing the limits for an adult because when you're a kid, you can have fun almost doing anything. And typically, when I was, I don't know, let's, let's just say 10 years old, for me to have fun meant not being around my parents, 
not being around the adults, you know, hanging out with, with my friends, my cousins. You know, we ran a pizza place. We did uh, a lot of biking together. You know, we were, we had some fun. We did some things. And, you know, we played baseball a lot. Baseball was a big thing, and we threw shit at each other. We tried to, to beat each other up. We wrestled each other. We, Who could hang on, you know, the monkey bars, the long, you know, it was, it was always competition. What do you get when you're older? It's like nobody cares no more. Everybody's trying to be, every, you're trying to get into that spot where you have made it in life and you don't want to lose it. I think that's what's going on, right? So I, I'm, I'm an attorney. I spent all this time, and I say attorney, look, I focus on attorney quite a bit because my father was an attorney. And I don't think that he was thinking this out because as he was getting older, he didn't want to be attorney no more. You know, he didn't want to have that reputation and follow that credibility level. He wanted to be a fuck up. You know, he wanted to have some fun, which he fucked it all up because he had kids. When you have kids <sighs> too young, like he did, you have to be responsible, which he was not. Like I have kids and I'm responsible and I'm smart because I had all my fun prior to everything, right? I'm not saying I don't have any fun anymore because I do things that are not within the normal realm of what people do. You know, if you ask all my friends, what do you do for fun? It's the same old shit, right? Well, a lot of these guys got motorcycles. A lot of them are still drinking. A lot of them are, and that's, that's it, right? I mean, typically they're going out drinking on the weekend. For me, Taking a chance, making a video, doing a podcast, getting on stage, you know, pushing the limits of anything that I am not sure that I know exactly how to do. And even after 30 some years of entertaining, there's always a chance that you can implode on stage, that you could lose it, have a panic attack or throw up or your routine never doesn't go well or you could die to big death for an hour. That's fun. See, that's fun. See, fun is getting out of your comfort level. I know Tony Robbins said this shit years ago, and he was right. Get out of your comfort zone because that's your lazy boy and your bag of Doritos and your fucking Netflix. And I'm in there a lot, especially with this COVID bullshit. Yes, I'm sitting there and I gotta pry my ass off the chair and go do something that might put me in a predicament or might be fairly hard or might be something I'm not exactly sure, but this is how we have fun. This is how we have fun now. Yeah, today I tore down the garage a little bit, right? Cause I got a little man cave out there. I got my beer can collection that I've had for 40 years and I put some shelving up and that was out of my comfort zone because I was like, I don't really feel like doing it, right? I feel like it's Sunday, you know, it's been a shit week right? It's been turmoil with the election. We have people still fighting about, you know, who won. And we have people accusing each other of lying and cheating and the world's torn apart. partners there's division and people are upset. And then I got to go out there and entertain everybody, right? I have shows coming up this week and next week. And now you have to start thinking about this. The world is, is not having a great time with each other. So, Typically people are laying back, they're sitting on a recliner, not doing much, not trying to go out there, don't want to catch the virus, just watch television, just do zero, a lot of zero action going on. Not a lot of traveling, not a lot of, uh, you know, going to Europe or whatever. I don't know, I don't, where do people go? I was going to Europe, I started going to Europe and now you can't go, so that sucks. So it's comfortable just to sit down and lay down. And then you get into that habit and then someone says, hey man, why don't you put those shelves up in your garage so you can hang your beer cans up and that person is your wife, but you're used to not doing much lately. See, if you get in that rut, which is the comfort zone, which is I'm not learning guitar. I'm not gonna go to back to college. I'm not gonna write any new jokes. I'm not gonna try a, a podcast, which this is episode at least 20. I've been doing at least 20 episodes now. If you, if you continue to not do much, guess what you're gonna do? You're not gonna do much. It's just that simple. If you always are jacking yourself up to do things, which is not comfortable, you know, making sure that you're not sitting down too much or that when you do have 
excess free time. It's not all about relaxation. It's about maybe getting some other things done or maybe thinking about the future. I like to think about the future. Where will I be? I know where I was 30 years ago. I was 27. Where will I be up to 87? I think I got a ride to 87. I think I got to figure out what I'm going to do that whole way. And I've done a lot of shit, raising kids, getting the house, setting it all up. And now what? It's kind of like craps. If you've, if you've ever played craps, I say this a lot. Craps, sometimes you get that whole board set up, right? You got money on every number and the pass line and you got it backed up and you got you know all the different ways to play the dice and then someone throws a seven and you're fucked that's a hurricane or that's covid or that's a shit election something that fucks you up and you rebuild it like fire ants when you step on their little mound they don't stop. They just build that shit back up. The fire ranches come back and they're on top of the mountain again and waiting, waiting for you to knock it over so they can rebuild it. That's what we got to do for the next 30 years. I just got to continue. Whatever happens, rebuild, rebuild, continue. Now, I know craps is a lot more riskier than what I'm talking about, which is just basically taking chances in life with your time and your money. So you, first of all, so you're not bored. And you're having fun because I think, why even exist if you're not going to have fun? Do you think you're that important that you're holding it all together for the rest of us? Thank you, scientists. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, everyone who takes it too fucking seriously. But by the way, you could take a little off the gas. Retire early and let the next guy who wants to be a doctor for 20 years, 25 years, chill out. Okay, I get it. Your life wasn't easy because you studied real hard to get where you're at. Okay, well, I bust my fucking ass to get where I'm at doing stand-up and look where I'm at still. Making my own fucking podcast, recording myself on video. I didn't quit. Am I any worse than you as a profession? Because I didn't choose becoming a doctor, which would have been 10 times easier. Any doctor, I will argue with you that it would have been 10 times easier to be a fucking doctor or a politician anything than a fucking stand-up comic and it's not easy but am i gonna quit no i'm not quitting i'm just gonna bitch about it right i will bitch as much as i want and i don't care if someone comments hey man why don't you quit whining about your shit what do you you need your cry room you want a safe space yeah yeah I, i'm just as much of a fucking whiner as anybody else when shit don't go right, like if shit was always going right, which would be boring, you know, if shit was always going right, because there was a time in my life, not too long ago, maybe like seven, eight months ago, like March, before March, before the fucking virus, where I kept saying, it's been a good run, it's been a good run, hmm. You know, when you live long enough, a good run becomes suspicious. When is the shit going to hit the fan? Because things have been going well too long. That's just how it is. That's how it is. Because if you're a smart person who has logic and you've been around long enough, you know the good times and the bad times don't last. They just don't. So if we're in a bad time right now, which we are, it will go away. But should we watch television and be reminded by the pricks on TV over and over and over. What a shit time we're living in. Should we have the running numbers of the deaths and the sickness? Should we continue to focus on that shit? Why don't you run the numbers of car crashes and heart attacks and cancer victims and how many people died on stage this week at the comedy club? Just keep giving us the shit because we want to drink it up and eat it up. We love the shit, man. That's what we've proven this year. That we are the stupid sponges that they thought we were. Continue to give us the crap and we will mop it up. We're not even wringing it out. We're letting it all stay inside of our little porous holes in our sponge. Every one of our little holes in the sponge of shit that we are is filled with crap, death, sadness, no work, bad people, fraud, all this shit they really think that we should believe 100% every day. And we need them. We need the people, the media, 
and the rest of the people, which I don't blame just the media right now. What I blame is people in general. People in general have become little tiny forms of the media. So they watch television and then they repeat the shit to somebody else. Guess what? I, I don't need to hear your shit, okay? Because I heard it already when I watched it or because it was on the gas station TV or the post office television or I heard somebody at the, the hotel over talking. Like everybody's infatuated with the shit. I guess we don't have any problems in the world. What happened was life was so good, really good, and nothing really had to be tended to. No cows, no crops, nothing. Even our bank accounts and, and our way of life was so good. I don't care who the fuck you are and you tell me that it hasn't been good in this country for a good 30, 40 years, it's been great. It's been great. And I, yes, all of us have personal 9-11s that have happened to us. Trust me, if I want to go into my deep cavern of shit, I could say, oh, you know, if I was hearing this from somebody else, I could point at them and go, wait a second, did you say 30? Who just said it the last 30 years was so good? Because it wasn't. And I'll give you an example. Well, no, 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 I'm not talking about your personal shit. I'm saying in general, in history, with technology and science and the the, the longevity of life and, and the ability for people to get more than they ever have and the traveling and all the things that you could do, it's been great. It's been great. No one can tell me any different. And I really felt that uh, people started making up shit. You know, you're getting offended started by saying certain things. Don't say certain words. Don't put people in certain calories. Stop shaming people. It, it has really come out of its ass, by the way. All those people have been pointing fingers and telling people, hey man, don't shame me in any way. Have been shaming everybody else. Have been committing fraud and lies and deceit by saying that they're someone they're not. They're, they're saying they're the good people when they're the bad people. There's a lot of people out there that have been doing this lately. And I think we all recognize them. I think we recognize them. And most people are like, well, what am I supposed to do about it? What am I supposed to do about it except kind of live local? Like I live local. My local life is what I have to worry about. I gotta worry about me and the gigs and my family and my local thing. And then if I got that under control, then I can go out into my city and make sure that the people around me and those people are okay, and then maybe the state and then maybe the country. We can't control most of what's happening and we have to trust our systems. Most people have been saying, no, defund all the different systems that we have trusted, break them down, tear them apart. To a certain point, change is good. But the systems that we rely on can't be wiped away, any of them, because we rely on them for a daily basis to get, uh, to survive. Whether it is the fuel system, society system, the political system, the criminal system, whether it is the economic system, all systems go until you tell me another path. It's like, don't quit your job until you find another job, right? When you have another system that works as well as the system we got now, or better, because it has to work better because that's why you're looking for another system, then I'll say, fine, I'll use your system. But your system is just paper and theory and hypotheticals, and you want me to go along with it? Uh, no, I'm not about to just burn everything down and you don't have a fucking plan. And why am I following you anyway? Because you decided to stand on a mountain and scream? Most of us don't want to stand on a mountain and scream. The people that stand on the mountain and scream are politicians. Those people actually want to get involved in supposedly service, service to the country. You're supposed to be servicing and taking care of and instead what we find out was they're servicing themselves. They got in and then they're like termites. They ate away and you didn't know they were eating the sh all of what made up the integrity of the system. You didn't even know they were eating it because the outside of it looked fine. It's when you touched it and it all fucking crumbled. You went like this and the whole thing went, we're like, holy fuck. 
What happened? All the termites that we elected were eating away at the inside, all the stuff that we've been building up for years, they fed on it and we didn't know. We didn't know, I think we're, we're more woke, 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 stupid word. I hate when people use it, get woke. No, I think people are more aware, aware of what's going on. We're aware, but uh, like I always say, you don't really, you can't make much of a change now. You're aware because the curtains were open and the play has begun. And then you start watching the play and you go, oh, I, I don't want to fucking see West Side Story. You're already sitting here. They already decided West Side Story was going to be on stage. Well, I wanted to see fucking Cats. Well, you should have got involved prior to the curtain opening and talked to the actors and the directors and the people who funded this play in the theater. And maybe you could have convinced them to play Cats, but you waited until the day of the play and sat down, they opened up the curtains, and West Side Story is playing, not Cats. So guess what? You're involved now in a play, or you'll have to watch it play out until it's over. Now, while you're watching Cat, or <laughs> while you're watching West Side Story, plan for Cats, okay? I'm sorry, this is a bad example because I don't know plays that well. I should have used movies instead. But it is kind of what I'm saying, is that people don't know what's going on behind the scenes. They're not interested. They don't want to have any involvement. They just want to relax and sit there and enjoy, enjoy what they see on the stage. And if they don't enjoy it, and nobody changes what's on the stage, then you have to be the agent of change. There's nobody else. You have to be the one that decides, I'm gonna, Come up with a play, I guess, shit. I was on my couch, I was enjoying my Doritos, I was watching you know, my television, my Netflix. Now I gotta get out of my comfort zone because every play so far that I've been watching sucks. So now I'm gonna have to write a new play, hire some people to put on this play, rent the theater. That's America. See, that is exactly what America is. We solve problems. So if there is a problem that needs to be satisfied, a problem that needs to be fixed, and most people are saying the same thing, then we come out in droves and fix it. I mean, I don't like the whole COVID thing, but look how corporations have adapted, right? And they're making commercials with masks on to show you that they're staying safe, not because necessarily that they believe in the bullshit of this, but they know a society in general wants to feel something safe D is number what number one what they want to feel so they want to make sure that you are going to still uh go to their establishments to buy their food their 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 phones at at t what i'm not want to mention any people but i'm just saying when you watch those commercials you'll see all the commercials now no matter what it is and you're watching those commercials because you're watching the news, which you got hooked onto because of the shit and the fraud. And those people who run those corporations know that you love shit and fraud, so they want to advertise over shit and fraud. And when they advertise you, they advertise to you emotionally that they understand how vulnerable you are, how much you need to wear that mask when you're in their business, and how much you need to see the employees wiping this shit down, and how much you need to make sure that the employees were distanced apart it's a fucking TV commercial. It's not real. None of it's real. You believe what you see on TV? This is how you got sucked into shit. It's not real, folks. What they're doing is trying to make sure you're happy. They're catering and pandering to you. So they make sure you buy their shit and I own their stock, so I'm happy you're buying it so my stock prices go up and I'm okay. I'm okay, see, we're all in on it. We're all, we're all complicit in this shit. I used to say that about cigarette companies, you know? A lot of people would say they kill. Cigarettes kill. Well, you can't say that because they, you know, they haven't proved it. There's been scientists because, again, the game that they play has been to make sure that the word is that cigarettes don't fucking kill. Then they had the Surgeon General's warning. But still... We know over how many years, 60 years, ever since before I was born, when my mother was smoking, my grandma was smoking, people dying of lung cancer. We know that cigarettes 
kill people, that you could die from smoking. People in my family, right? Lots of people that uh, have died. But, but here's the thing. They will advertise that shit to you. They will advertise it to you. We know better. People are buying it. And then you go, well, we're not going to be able to beat them at their game. These people are too powerful. The people that control the cigarettes, the people that control the economy, the people that control the stock market. So how, how do I not get left behind? Because they're not listening to me. I guess you have to buy their stock. If you want to be involved, you have to buy their stock. That's one way. Sure, you can make money. Now, I'm not saying I buy, I don't have any stock in cigarette companies. But I do have it in all kinds of other companies that are on television that I go, such horse shit, you know? I like their product, but the way they're presenting it to the public is in a way to make sure that the public understands they care about your safety. I don't know. I think it's all a, uh, a way to sell. It's all about money and it's continually going on. And it's depressing in some ways because you don't want to believe that everybody is like that. And there's some groups that are not like that, you know that, but they're not the big people. The big people who are in control in every aspect. In this election, in this, in this world of corporations, in this world of uh, the, the, the foreign economy, the, the trade uh, situations that we have, how we trade goods with other countries and they trade goods with us, the big players, the big players, they're very smart. They're very smart. And me, what do, you, what do, what do I want to do? I want to make my podcast. I want to have some fun. I am hoping that the people who are in charge are doing the right thing. But what if they don't? Now what? Now what? So we got very serious right there because it's really, this is what's going on. This is, a very, this is how difficult it is to entertain people when they're all, we're all thinking the same way. Like, what the fuck are we going to do? Right? What are we going to do if we, we can't go see a band or a comedian? If we can't go out, if there's another lockdown, what if there's more death? You know, it's constant. It's constant worrying. And I think people are relieved that the election happened, number one. We don't really know uh, if there's going to be a, an argument for months or maybe it'll be over very soon. But what we have to understand is the play, the play has started. You're sitting in the audience. The curtain has been pulled back. You're just an audience member. You are not actively involved. You're not an attorney. You're not a senator. You're not anyone that has any way of influencing what's going on, number one, in the election, and number two, in most of the matters that are out of our hands, including what happens with the vaccine and the virus. Yeah, there's a few doctors and people, but I'm going to guess on my podcast right now with the number of down downloads I have, most of the people that are watching me or listening to me, we're just part of the audience. And we're hoping that the next time that we get to watch a play, that the next time the curtain opens, that it's going to be something we really are interested in. It's going to make us super happy and that we're going to remember the shitty plays that we had to sit through years past and appreciate ever more from now on and be grateful of how how amazing we have it right now right now which is exactly what i try to do every day no matter what happens no matter how much shit is thrown at me no matter how many times i get up every day and have to calm people in my life down and say it's gonna be all right relax i'll tell you what let's go get a donut Let's go get some pizza. Let's go to the beach. I'll, I'll put my shells up in, in the garage. Make everybody relax. If, if you're a, a person who can keep people calm, please help out right now and keep everybody calm. That's what I'm saying, okay? Sir Solo Podcast, I'm glad you watched. I'm glad you listened. And remember, the podcast that we do on a regular basis, the Carmen Sir Solo Show, Every Wednesday, we put that out very early Wednesday morning. Mike, I don't know what he does with himself, but he gets up at like, or he stays up. Is it three in the morning? He puts the podcast out, but that'll be out. Check my website if you're interested in watching any of my comedy shows, CarmenSirSolo.com or TheConstructionComic.com. Really, the routine I do on stage for stand-up is basically the same no matter what it is. 
whether it's construction, comedy, or Carmen Terso. It's everybody understands it. It's the common man. It's it's the logical person's comedy. Please take a listen to the podcast if you can. Subscribe to my YouTube videos. And thank you. Thank you very much for watching and listening.